Hello, Gaston County. Welcome to episode number 89 of Gaston's Great, a podcast highlighting some of the great things happening in and around Gaston County. I'm your host, Stephen Long, and we are coming to you once again from the worldwide headquarters of GSM Services right here in downtown Gastonia. We simply believe in discussing more of the reasons why Gaston's great. We have another great organization this week as we highlight the Illumination Foundation and Carolina Fireflies. We have Dustin Summerfield and Kathy Moore with us today. Dustin is the coach and athletic director of the Fireflies in the league associated with the Fireflies. And Kathy is the CEO of the foundation and maybe more importantly, the team mom. Is that accurate? That is correct. All right, Dustin and Kathy, it's great to have you on and welcome to the podcast. Thank Thanks for having you. Us. All right, so we're going to get right to it. And maybe, um, maybe Kathy, I'll start with you. Just tell us a little bit about yourself, anything that you would like to share before we get into the, the foundation. Um, basically, I have worked with people with developmental disabilities for 24 years. Um, started as a volunteer at Holy Angels, taught um, at Gaston Comprehensive Day Center when it okay. was around, um, and then just moved throughout my career. Uh, dedicating my life to people with with various disabilities. Okay, very good. Dustin, what about you, sir? What would you like to share? Uh, so I, I, just, uh, I was cutting meat for 20 years, and <laughs> I started coaching the Fireflies baseball, and then I started taking on dealing with uh, Chris, a couple guys from the baseball team, started working with them and Sean. And okay. That's basically what I do, do one-on-ones. With so where you guys, are you guys, I know – before we started, Kathy mentioned you're originally here from Gastonia. You're born and raised here? Or? I was born and raised here in Gastonia. Um, okay. My grandmother actually uh, worked at the Dixie Yarns Mill. Oh, wow, um, yeah. Way back uh, during World War II all the way through. Holy moly, wow. Um, so, yeah, we've we've been here for a while, my family has. Dustin, what about you? Uh, I was born in Fort Myers, Florida. And okay. My uh, parents transferred with jobs, moved to Sarasota. Then we moved up here when I was about ten, so I've been here for about twenty eight years now. Okay. That's a good while. So so we'll 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 accept that as you are a um you know enough about Gaston County. Yes, okay. Yes. So here's the big question and I'll maybe and, and we'll throw out questions that are really for both of you, but I I'll maybe start with you, you Kathy, on this one. Um what is the Illumination Foundation? What is the Carolina Fireflies? You know, what so this is uh, what is there a mission and just kind of Give the your, your background and any anything that you'd like to share specifically because I'm you know there may be some listeners out there who just aren't familiar with the your your group. Sure, um, Illumination Foundation was founded in 2015, um, and what we do is we promote the normalcy of people with disabilities in the community. We try to bridge the gap between people with disabilities and the community at large and um, introduce them to their peers and really integrate them into the community. I find that the best way to educate about disabilities is through exposure. Okay. So that was our first mission, is to just get people with disabilities visible in the community. Um, from that, we were approached by Taylor Duncan, who is the... Um, commissioner for the alternative baseball organization um and it was really interesting because i was kind of on the fence wasn't sure how it was gonna go <laughs> um and i just kind of put out a, a thing on facebook that said hey i need a coach and um dustin was the first to respond wow okay. he, he raised his hand and he said you know what i'm willing to do this we started the carolina fireflies with three participants in 2019 this year we have 26 qualified players. Wow, okay. Um, so we have grown quite a bit over the years. Okay. So um, Dustin kind of, you know, so if I heard, heard that correctly. You answered a social media request. Is that correct? Okay. So, That's so I've interesting. Known, I've known Charlotte, Kathy, Kathy, since I was 14, 15. Okay. So she, her uh, – Ex-husband was friends with my brother, so I was hanging out with my brother. and So, so there was already him. some connection. Yes. Okay. So I knew her from past, and I was like, yeah, I know. I'll do it. I've played baseball and sports my whole life. and Actually, I was coaching at the time. So I was like, yeah, I just do this and pick it up. And, and okay. We just kind of went from there, started out, I said, with three players. And I think we had, by the first year, we had eight. Maybe eight players, and next year I think we had 12, and we had 16, and 
So we just kept on adding, 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 gotcha. and adding players as we went on. So talk about, I mean, can you talk about the the league? Are how, are there other teams from other areas in North Carolina, or is it just a, a more of a local thing here it's, only? Or it's local? We do okay. have people traveling from Charlotte because there's nothing really like nothing this like, in the area, okay. and that's part of the reason why I wanted to do this. Because as I said, as playing baseball and sports, there's always you got rec leagues for kids, you got rec softball for men, you got co-eds for men and women, right. you got adult. Uh, amateur baseball leagues, but you have nothing really for this community that will help them have the same experience as a normal person would as playing slow pitch softball their lives or sure playing for a minor league baseball team or a amateur baseball team or semi pro football. Just give them something to look forward to and Okay. So um typically a question we like to ask is Talk about some of the initiatives, but is the Carolina Flyer, Fireflies, is that pretty much the primary initiative that um, the, this, the foundation is involved with currently? Yeah, at this point, our main focus is the Carolina Fireflies, but that's because it's baseball season. Okay, um, gotcha. In the off season, we do a lot of community events. Um, okay. It may be a scavenger hunt in Uptown Charlotte. It may be the concerts at the Rotary Club in Gaston County. Okay, gotcha. um, It may be a night at City Cade. Um, it just depends. The idea is to have adult activities for adults that live with disabilities. As Dustin said, there are a ton of programs for children. But once we hit that 18 to 21 right, year right. old mark, the, the programs decline and there's not near enough support. Um, and again, there, there needs to be some normalcy. We're at, a sit, we're at a point where one in five children are diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder every year. One in five. That is a huge number. Right. Um, and we are becoming more visible. And we have goals in life like anyone else has. I'm working with a young lady right now who's looking to get married and start a home and her and her partner build a life together. Right. And we just want to normalize that and say, you have a right just like I have a right to be happy and be loved and be a part of this community. They contribute in so many ways, whether it's volunteer work or um, just being a light in someone's life, you know, that, that they do and they, and they deserve the opportunity sure. to, to go out and have a meal and it be normal mm -hmm. for them to have that meal. Right. A lot of times we go to restaurants, and they'll see an individual with disability, automatically give them a kid cup and some crayons. <laughs> and and I love that people are empathetic. Yeah. But, but when you're dealing with adults, it's very important that they're treated like adults. So what's the typical, um, what's the age range that you guys uh, are serving? 15 and up. 15 and up. Okay. 15 all the way through. Okay. So describe to me um, maybe a day in the life or may, or or how often are games, where are they, where, where are the games played, that kind of thing? Uh, so the league games are every Tuesday. At, uh, we're playing at T. Jeffers Center because okay. we didn't get the fields up and we like the – we played a posting for the past five years. We didn't get them this year. But that and uh, we play the Bs about once a month because that's the only team in the ABO – uh, association that's near us and okay. High Point, so we're about an hour and a half drive from them, which is part of another reason why I made the wanted to do the league, so we didn't play more games instead of practicing for eight months and playing four games, <laughs> two in High Point, two down here. So now they got a six game season and a, a playoff season. Then they'll play our all star team and play the bees, which is Carolina Fireflies will be our all star team. Okay. So essentially, the way it works is we have three teams in the league: red, blue, charcoal. Gotcha. Okay, they consist of typicals with uh, typical individuals as well as people with disabilities. Now, it's not like the Miracle League; they're not on base with their person. They're playing just like anybody else would play ball. Um, and then, from those three teams, we select fifteen to play for our travel team, the national team, which is alternative baseball organization. Now, currently, the Carolina Fireflies are the largest mm -hmm. team in alternative baseball. There are 38 states that have alternative baseball leagues. We play here in North Carolina, and then we do the national game, which is this year will be in Dallas, Georgia. So that's essentially how the, okay. the league and ABO kind of work. We just got too big to only do alternative baseball. 
if you got 26 people in your lineup, somebody's not playing. Yeah. So this okay. way, everybody gets to play. And we had our first game last night, um, which was very exciting. We had a doubleheader. Uh, so, and it was it was a good experience. I think everybody really enjoyed it. Yeah, I believe we'll probably be on YouTube. Was it putting it on YouTube? Right. Um, we have a YouTube channel, Carolina Fireflies, okay. where you can look at the games. And if you want to watch them live and can't come to T. Jeffers Park, it's on Game Changer. You can download the app okay. and watch the game live from Game Changer. All right, so that's a lot. That's a lot to a lot to take in. It um, is, but that's good. It's it's interesting. What it's what it feels like is it's such a, a niche, right? It's such a unique. Um, and you mentioned that there's just nothing, not many things like it. Um, yeah, don't worry about that. That, was <laughs> that. Don't worry about that, Cap. Um, so you know, with your time with um, the foundation, Carolina Fireflies, can you maybe describe? Maybe an anecdotal story of a success or something you're most proud of accomplishing or seeing. I mean, I'm sure there's probably a lot of examples or, or a, you know, a player or somebody you've been serving that just, wow, that was that that showed the whole point, right? I think Cameron, Cameron Reimer. Okay. Um, he's a guy. He's nonverbal. Lives with autism. Um, and when he first started with us, he was very reserved. Um, and very unsure. Uh, he wasn't sure who to trust, who to mm. listen to. Um, we started, um, <clears throat> he would he would swing at the ball, but he wouldn't swing hard. Okay. Didn't know how to get him to swing hard. Um, and then finally one of our assistants said, Cameron, make it loud. Use the sound. Uh, make, okay. the, make the ball hit loud, um, which is now kind of our mantra, make it loud. It's on the back of our shirts. Um, Now this young man is coming in, and he's high-fiving, and he's using words to communicate. Um, He's making friends within his teammates. He's learned to trust Dustin. um, And and the fans really cheer him on, and and we've really enjoyed. So I guess on the Carolina Firefly side, that's that's our biggest accomplishment. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah, you know, I think – I mean, I played sports growing up through high school and uh, it, that is sports can be it, you can see that across all sports and all levels and all um skill levels right of, of, of somebody who um is, is that reserve and they get in with a group that they trust and have fun with and you know, you know next thing you know they're you know, they're leading the team and leading the encouragement or whatever you want to you know, however you want to describe that Right. It's really hard for people with autism to make those social connections. Yep. Um, and I think that's part of the beauty in what we do is everybody is together so we all feel normal. <laughs> okay. Um, when you when you get a group of autists together, it can be a little awkward, but after a while they start, okay, all right, this person knows how to communicate with me. This person knows how to be with me and and not be offensive. Right. Then they start to relax, and then you can really get in there and get some of that social anxiety and tame it down a little bit. Um, and I think that's a lot what happened with Cameron um, was he built those relationships. Uh, and what separates us is that we play by major league rules. Oh, wow. Okay. okay? So the only adaption in play is we play with a 12-inch gym ball. So these, this is not your Special Olympics, everybody's a winner league. I, 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 it's just not. These individuals are out there, and they are playing hard, and they are competing. They are sliding. They are stealing <laughs> bases. Um, it, and it gets wild out there. They're getting dirty. They get dirty. Yeah. It's not baseball if you're not dirty. That's right. Yeah, that uniform's not dirty. You didn't maybe didn't have that baseball effort. Well, that's interesting. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. And listen, I was on the website, and yeah, those pictures were not; those were legit photos of baseball happening. I mean, it wasn't. It wasn't. I don't know what I was expecting when I when I looked on there, but it wasn't. Um, it wasn't t-ball. No, I, you no. know what I mean. You know, <laughs> it, it was. It was. It was very um, typical baseball uh, for me and what I know about it. Um, so. You know, this is a classic question that we'd like to ask is, you know, looking ahead for the organization, um, you know, what do you see down the road for the future? Or, or is there any big plans or is it trying to serve more people or just, you know, in general, what do you what do you see going forward? 
Um, I think to serve more people, have more people included, um, really reach out to some of the folks that don't know what their options are, um, that don't understand how to navigate the community or services and support that they need. That's another big thing we do is help guide individuals to the support that they need. Um, there's a, I could go into 10,000 things that we need for people with disabilities, housing, income, jobs, sure. yeah. um, you know, and, and we just want to support our people through all of that um, and let them know, hey, you're not alone. You're not the only person that deals with these issues. And it goes beyond in the intellectual disabilities. Uh, veterans of war, oh, yeah. they, they suffer a lot of social anxiety. Um, regular people that have had accidents um, that are now disabled, they, they need service navigation and support navigation. So I think just outreaching more to the community outside of Gaston County, we'd like to go out into the entire state of North Carolina. I think same thing with baseball. Yeah, it's eventually expand and grow. And I heard if I heard you correct early on, I mean it, it's you're you're bringing you're serving others from not just from Gaston County, is that correct? That's correct. Because it's such a unique um, unique program. So how does um so you've got a player or somebody that you're serving, how do they how do you find them? How do you get in touch with them? I mean, is it people reaching out to you or how, how does that, how does that work? It's both. It's okay. both. I, I, you know, I'll be honest with you. If I see someone with a disability, my first question is, Hey, how old are you? And do you play baseball? <laughs> do you coach? Do you yeah, want to coach? Um, and, and that, you know, and then Dustin does a lot of community work. Okay. Um, so a lot of people ask about his hat or his shirt or the individual he's with. And he does a lot to really advocate for us gotcha. um, and get our name out there. Okay. So this is a question that I like to ask. And you've shared, you know, you really already shared a couple of reasons, but, but I'll, I'll, more than one reason, but I'll ask anyway, and I'll start with you. Kathy, remember this is a this is a podcast about Gaston County and w- the positive things that are happening around here. And listen, and there are a lot, uh, and and you, you really described one here as well. But why would you say Gaston County in general is better because of you know the work you you guys are doing here? Um, I think that if you look per capita, there are a lot of people with disabilities in Gaston County. Okay, um, we're one of the biggest service needs areas in the in the state, um, and I think. What makes us great is that um, the people that, that support one another, the, when you walk into a restaurant, they don't look at you crazy. You know, they talk to the individual. Yeah, the yeah. people, the compassion, the empathy. Um, I think what we do brings out more diversity and inclusiveness in the county, and I think that's very important. Okay. Dustin, how would you answer that question? Why, why do you think uh, Gaston County and are in not just Gaston County because you're re- you're reaching a little bit broader, you know, group than just Gaston County? But why is Gaston County better because of the Fireflies and the Illumination Foundation? I mean, I said just an original, unique thing that yeah. really is just not being done, not that we know of. It's growing to the community, and I said, ask the 26 players. I'm sure they'll say it's oh yeah, makes sure. them great, and they're probably the highlight of their week. Yeah, I mean, my, my fact, I'm glad you brought that up. I'm, give me one second. I'm going to look up um, what episode the Special Olympics was. Episode 58, we actually had um, two players from the Fire, Firefly Zone on the Special Olympics episode. So, if listeners out there, if you haven't listened to that episode, yeah, you could hear the enthusiasm in their voices, you know, when they were talking about it. And, in fact, they may have talked about, their experience with the fireflies more than some of the other things that they were involved <laughs> with, you know? So again, that was uh, David and Samantha. So again, I would encourage our listeners to go out there and take a, take a listen to that uh, episode. If you want to get to, 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 um, to Dustin's point about, um, you know, hearing from, from somebody who's been involved with it. So, I mean, before we you know, we, we kind of, we've got a couple things, uh, questions that we'd like to go through here that are gas and counter related questions. And, but before I do that, and um, is there anything I haven't asked, that I should have asked, he'd like to share. Now, one of the main points before we finish, we'll make sure that our listeners know where to find more information, 
Uh, I don't know if you ever need volunteers, you have any events specific coming up, or just, you know, we want to make sure our listeners know how to get in touch with Donate or however, you know, so we'll make sure about it. Is there anything I haven't asked or anything you'd like to share before we kind of shift gears here briefly to go to these Gaston County-related questions that we're going to make you answer? Uh, um, I, I would just like to say that it would be great to see people in the community come out and support our guys. Sure. It is uh, not what you think it is. Take all your ideas and throw them away. Yeah. Because what is going on on that field um, is truly competitive baseball. They are trash talking <laughs> and they are oh, that's um, good. out there having a really good time, but they want to win. Yeah. They want to win. Um, so I would just encourage the community to, to give us a shot. Is the, is the schedule on the website or yes. um, Facebook or those places Facebook that where they can find? Okay, again, we'll make sure we touch on those. So, um, again, this is, uh, you know, again, podcast about Gaston County. We have these Gaston County-related questions that we like to ask our guests, and we really don't give you any choice, um, especially you've both been here. Well, Kathy's been here your entire life, and, sure. and Dustin, you know, you've been here long enough maybe to answer some of these questions. And I'm going to call them the, the illuminated – Speed round of questions this week. Is that a good segue? <laughs> All right, Kathy, we'll start with you. What is your favorite Tony's ice cream flavor? Lemon. Lemon. Gosh. Lemon. Vinny Cherry, did you hear that? I got one of my buddies that was on early in the podcast, and he was the first person I ever heard say that. Lemon. But we've had a couple people over, yeah. the, over the episodes that have said that. Dustin, what about you, sir? You have a favorite Tony's ice cream flavor? I say I have a favorite. I'd probably say cookies and cream. Ooh, my wife yeah. likes the grape. Okay. Grape. grape. My wife likes the grape. You know. Grape. That might be the most popular answer. It's wild. I Grape ice cream. But yeah. It's like a sherbet. Yeah. But and you can't, it's, and it's very rare, I think. I don't yeah. think that's something you can get right. very, very often. Dustin, are you a sun drop or cheer wine person? Cheer wine. Yeah, me too. I'm, I'm big sun on the drop. yellows. Sun drop. Sun All right. Drop. So we're going to fight about that one. <laughs> How about, Kathy, favorite local restaurant? E- um, I guess I'm going to say Sammy's. Sammy's, oh, yeah, Sammy's is probably probably one of my favorites. Dallas location or it Belmont? Is doesn't da- matter. Be- okay. Belmont, Dallas, I go to both. Okay, yeah. <laughs> you know what? I've been to the Belmont one multiple times. I haven't been to the Dallas yet, but I need to get over there. Dustin, what about you? I'll say the Peter Wheel. Oh, yeah, Peter Wheel. I was just there yesterday. It's so close. Peter Will's great. <laughs> yeah, it's too close, right? And well, then, well one the, my, the one here in Gastonia, one but you know, we've got Dallas, and then we just week, opened one in Belmont, I think, too. Yeah, you can't go wrong with Peter Will. What about uh, Dustin? Favorite local out, uh, local activity outside? Favorite park or something that you like to do here around town, uh, around the county? I mean, it's a baseball and. I mean, yeah. So any of the base, any of the any of the parks that have the baseball facilities, the new hang time place, the golf, where they got the trackers. Oh, and, okay, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I haven't heard that one before. That's good, Kathy. What about you? Uh, of course, I'm going to say Martha Rivers because it's our inclusive park. Oh, yeah. So, I really like Martha Rivers Park a lot. Um, I like that it's for everybody. Yeah. In fact, I was just there about 530 this morning with my – I'm involved with a group called F3, a little workout group, and we meet there on Wednesday mornings, do a little workout out at, at Martha Rivers. Yeah, it's a very okay. versatile, great, great park. It is. It is a great park. All right, so this is um, the question that I ask every episode no matter what. And it might not apply sometimes. It doesn't apply sometimes to our guests, but I ask anyway. So I'll start with you on this one, Kathy. UNC Duke or NC State? Duke. Duke all day. You just got a sound effect. That's exactly what you just got. And that's okay. That's okay. Dustin? Florida Florida State. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I have to go go with Duke, too. By default. So he just went off the reservation completely. It's not even one of the options. Yeah, I'd go with Duke. Oh. Maybe we can – can we edit that part out? Because yeah. the, the, the correct answer is NC State, by the way, mm. if, you were, if you were wondering. So, Kathy, what is something very few people know about you? Oh, wow, that's a loaded question. <laughs> um, <laughs> I would say people don't know that um, I was raised by a single father. Okay. That's kind of um, un- that's a little unique in our society, isn't it? It is. It is, um, especially in 1988 oh, when yeah. it happened. Oh wow! Um, so I'd say that's something few people don't know about me. Is I was I was raised solely by my father, who was a marine. Um, oh wow! And and uh, that that really 
if you if you're a girl dad and you raised girl, you know how that can can make you a unique individual. So, oh sure, yeah, I have, I have uh, two girls. I would say uh, that myself. Um, where did you go? You know, Mom, asked, where did you go to high school? Hunter Huss. Hunter Huss. What Hunter year Huss did you What year did you graduate? Nineteen ninety eight. Oh, good gracious. See, I'm telling my age here now. You are young. Um, but, you know, another I got, I got interesting a, I fact. I got a full 10 years on you there, uh, uh, 1988 I, from Ashbrook. I, um, uh, my grandmother, my dad, myself, and my sister all went to the same elementary school. Okay. Which was Lingerfeld. Oh, excellent, um, And yeah. then my dad, my sister, and I all went to Hunter Huss. Yeah, well, Huss is terrific, yeah. Great local school. Dustin, how would you answer that question? I mean, what is something very few people know about you? I don't know. I'm a pretty open person. I don't really. Sometimes, listen, that's a hard question. We, yeah, we uh, all of our guests have not answered that one. <laughs> I mean, are you a Tampa Bay? Are you a Tampa Bay fan? Yeah, I am. Well, from Florida. Of course, I can really say that might not be something very few people know about you because you're wearing a shirt. Yeah, <laughs> well, a lot of people, they, a lot of people probably don't know. But like, I've traveled around a lot when I was younger. So I went to like five different elementary schools before. Oh, okay. We moved up here, then I still went to two different ones in Gastonia. That's interesting. Okay. Yeah, that's, that, listen, that's that's a little <laughs> unique. What about, uh, Kathy, start with you. What about, is there a book or blog, article, just something that, uh, even a podcast um, that you might recommend to our listeners that? Um, I, you know, I would say anything written by Temple Grandin. Okay. Um, and Temple Grandin is an animal psychologist who lives with autism. Um, she's the closest that we have that can give us a true relatable. Oh, okay. uh, I know I'd heard that name before, but I didn't know that of connection. autism and what it is. I'm a bit of a nerd, so if it, I mean I I read a lot of uh, scientific research okay. and, and things of that nature. On a on a fun end, I would say Matthew McConaughey's Green Light was a great book. I have read that. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed it. It made a lot of sense to me. I was able to connect in uh, that a lot was, of ways. Yeah, I, I have to admit, I didn't know what to expect. But that was a very interesting story. I, I think that even the especially the part when he when he was younger in Australia. Yes, that was. I had no idea. You yes, know? So yes. That so was, I was. That I was, was actually. And you know what? And as a business owner, as a community. In so many modern communities, a lot of good lessons too, uh, from a leadership standpoint, and just the things that he's accomplished. So yeah, I thought it was a great read. Absolutely. So I appreciate you bringing that up, Dustin. Do you have anything you could share there? Well, if nothing I read. So the only thing I really keep up like up is a, I'm a big since I've grown up uh, Deion Sanders, and I always keep up with him because okay. I think he's a good coach and just how he how his ways like he'll bench his own son in the championship game. He don't sure. care just. And now he's in the big, bigger time now with yeah. being at Colorado. So I mentioned to see how. Uh, I said he's from Fort Myers too when I was born. Yeah, so and, he, and he was. I mean, he was an unbelievable athlete, yes. right? Baseball, playing, football. Uh, yeah, playing. What? Wasn't he the one that played a football game and baseball game the same day? Yeah, flew, one for flew the Braves. The yeah, yeah, that was interesting. Well, listen, we appreciate you kind of indulging us on those Gaston County um, questions. So just a couple more questions. Um, and we'll be we'll get this episode finished up. So, Kathy, I'll start with you on this one. Again, keeping with our theme about Gaston County, and so besides you know the Illumination Foundation and Carolina Fireflies, why would you say Gaston County is such a great place? Um, I would say the outdoor um, opportunities. Yeah. You know, we have Daniel Stowe's, and we have the Whitewater Center, and we have Martha Rivers, and we have the Rotary Club that does the concerts sure. in the evening. They're rebuilding the downtown district, which I love. Yeah. Um, the Rooster, a new live music <laughs> venue. Yep. It's great. So there's a lot of stuff happening in Gaston County right now, um, and I think that's what makes Gaston great is we are open to growth. Yeah, absolutely. Thank so. you. Dustin, how would you answer that? Like I said, like I said the growth and just like so much stuff around. With like you got mountains and just a lot of unique things with the – What's going on downtown with the venues? And yeah, it's, it, we are unique with the – not too many counties have, like, something like Crowder's Mountain and downtown Lake Wiley area. and Catawba River. And, you know, so it is unique for our – for the Piedmont uh, area. Is. You normally have to drive a little – you know, a couple hours to get a mountain, even though it's not quite Mount Mitchell. But yeah, it's uh, right. but it's still a great – again, something unique and for, for outdoors for our county. So um, I think I say this every episode, don't I know, but this is my favorite question. So, Kathy, what, knowing what you know now, what advice would you give your 20-year-old self? That's a question I contemplated. <laughs> you had sent me them, and I really thought about that. Yeah. And I think I would tell myself, slow down. 
Okay. Take it easy. Your time's going to come. Um, if you hold steady to your truth, success is, is going to come for you. So I think that's what I would say is be true to yourself. If it does not serve you, do not do it. Yeah, when we're t- when I was 20, getting older and whatever, however I define success, couldn't get here quick enough, right? Right. <laughs> I mean, and right. looking you back, I'm like, being an adult. <laughs> yeah, I mean, now and I'm like, boy, adult, it'd be nice to be like, 20 again. Slow, <laughs> slow that roll, right? That's a great, that's a good answer. I don't know that we, and you know what, this is episode 89, and I don't know that we've had anybody articulate it that way. So um, I appreciate that greatly, yeah. Um, and just to remind you, you're much closer to 20 than I am. <laughs> Uh, Dustin, how would you answer that question? I know it's a unique question. Uh, I'd say just know your worth and just move on and yeah, you know, find something better. So I said, I, was, I mean, I was not in a bad situation, but I mean, I could have. If I took initiative, I could have got better faster. Well, you know, it's interesting. The, a theme that we hear, and and, and for me, it's um, perspective. The perspective that I have now versus when I was twenty, mm-hmm. which was zero perspective. And unfortunately, I've grown to believe that it, it's just experience um, and time. I mean, I don't know if it's possible to have perspective when you're 20. You know, yeah. I, it would be nice. But but I appreciate that, especially the comment about worth, right? I think so many people, including myself when I was younger, yeah, that was, um, why did I deserve success or whatever? You know, there's so many things that we the, – we, need to quit listening to ourselves and talk to ourselves better about <laughs> um, kind of some of the negative things I tell myself. We're so we're much harder on ourselves, yeah. right, than we are on um, others. And, and if we talk to the others the way we talk to ourselves sometimes, it would be ridiculous. So, but listen, this has been really good. And let's, you know, again, not forget that the main point here is for our listeners to learn uh, more about your organization, what's going on, any events, or just anything you'd like to share, website, how can they find more information out if somebody wants to donate, are there volunteer uh, opportunities uh, ever, just any, again, anything and everything that you can share for us. Right. Um, there's always an opportunity to volunteer for the baseball team, of course, with okay. the Carolina Fireflies. You can find us at www.illuminationnc.org. That's where we post up our scheduled okay. events. Um, as far as volunteering with us, the best thing that people can do to support us is come out and socialize with us. Okay. Come out, have a cocktail, let's talk about it. Um, it's, it's, it's not as serious as everybody wants to treat you know, our community. Um, we're laid back. We want to have fun like anybody else has fun. Um, as far as donations, that is our biggest challenge. Gotcha. Um, okay. Because our programs are at no cost to the participant um, because we don't want money to to stop someone from enjoying life. And sure. a lot of our folks live on Social Security and limited incomes. Um, so donating is very, very important. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and and it, it's good for the soul. Right. It is, it's just good to feed the soul. This population is so full of life and hope. And um, to be a part of that is something that's really, really special. It makes you stand back and look and say, you know, there's purpose and there's meaning in their lives. Um, and they deserve happiness like any of us do. And so that's what we really want to get out in the community is we're just regular people <laughs> with different abilities, you know. Do you find, I mean, again, that's a, I, I have no experience with this other than some community involvement through um, United Way or um, the Arc of Gaston County, you know, some of these organizations that I have been uh, involved with over the years. Uh, First Methodist Church here is where I attend, and you know, we – um, are, are involved with a lot of things re- uh, related. But do you find, you mentioned that a couple of times, do you find that people in general just don't know how to act or don't know, you know, how right. to, yeah. Yes, they don't They don't know what to say. They yeah. become very nervous. They don't know if they should make eye contact. Is it okay to touch? Yeah. Is it okay? Um, as opposed to just having a normal conversation is really what you're really re- looking for. Right. Is that, you, yeah, that's right. Um, you know, I think a lot of people see a physical disability um, and assume that there's a mental disability okay. or a nonverbal person 
um, who has great receptive language and right. just can't express themselves. That's where we come in. We come in to interpret the world. In all honesty, the world will never conform to our population. But we can teach our population to conform to the world. And the only way to do that is through exposure and experience. Yeah. And so that's where our primary focus is, experience in life. I've got folks that do indoor skydiving that rode the, do the NASCAR experience. This one right here. Um, we go to Carowinds Rod roller coasters and just uh, concerts. and. Right. We had two guys do the dirt track the other week, one that has pretty severe cerebral palsy. Loved it. Oh, wow. You know, everything about it. Stuff um, I don't have the guts to do, frankly. Right, right. <laughs> and they and they have all the desires and wants that, that we have. And if everybody will just kind of relax and let them show yeah. you their light, you can be really blessed by what they can do. Right. Well, again, I appreciate you sharing that. So, I'm um, about to wrap this one up. So give you guys kind of the final word. Anything else you'd like to share or um, discuss before we wrap this episode up? Like I said, we're always looking for volunteers, especially for the baseball to grow. So we okay. like qualified coaches, I should say, like people that have experience that could help out a lot that would help this thing grow. And like I said, of course, just the volunteers and people coming out to games. Games are uh, 620. Tuesday nights, T. Jeffers, and the second game usually at seven twenty. Some when we have double headers every other week. Okay. So it's one game. So um, if there's say there's somebody out here who has a, a a child, a friend, a neighbor, or somebody they think you know this might be something they would be interested in. Is that they go to the website? Is that the best way to get in touch yes. with you or how? Okay. Yeah. And find website, out more about we're on Facebook. Gotcha. Um, I don't do a lot of Twitter or Instagram, mm, just yeah. not, you know, um, but we, we do, and we, like Dustin said, Carolina Fireflies, we have the YouTube channel. Gotcha. Okay. Um, where we will post up our games and then download Game Changer for a live view. Okay. Of Perfect. what's going on. All right. Well, listen, I appreciate your time uh, greatly in, um, just well done, you know. Appreciate the work that that you guys are doing. It's obvious that it's making an impact. And uh, again, uh, this is what it takes, right? And this is what sharing this type of thing is really the whole purpose. Two years ago, a little over two years ago, when we started this, is to again bring awareness to organizations like yourself. And like I normally do, I want to finish up with a little um, maybe book or podcast recommendation and a quote or thought for the the week. And I think hope I think the thought ties into what both. Uh, Kathy and Dustin have shared today, but I'm going old school with my book recommendation. All the way back to 1926, a gentleman named George Samuel Clawson wrote a book called The Richest Man in Babylon. And I like that book, and it's one I've given to my kids. And uh, I would encourage, especially if you know any young people who are getting ready to get out in the real world, it's basically a 1926 model on how to manage money. And um, it's interesting that here, 19, here it is almost 100 years later, and I think it still applies. And my quote and thought for this week comes from a gentleman named Roy Goodman, who said, remember that happiness is a way of travel, not a destination. And my guess is that um, Kathy and Dustin are probably two of those people with the work they're doing, and they're looking for, you know, their way of travel is um, serving others and helping others find that happiness that, you know, to your point, we all deserve, right? Correct. And regardless of our, our circumstance. So. Again, thanks for your time. And to our listeners out there, thanks so much for taking the time to listen to today's episode. Please continue to spread the word if you can about the podcast, and please don't hesitate to contact us here at our email address, which is podcast at gastonsgreat.com. We are always looking for suggestions for future podcast topics and guests. You can find the podcast and subscribe at the website, gastonsgreat.com, or anywhere you listen to podcasts. And please follow us on all our social media platforms, and again, according to Naomi, give us a good five-star rating. Helps the podcast get noticed. Thanks again to Dustin and Kathy for being our guests today. Gaston's Great is produced and brought to you by Naomi Hunt and Amy Anderson from GSM Services and edited here locally by the Sumner Group. I'm your host, Stephen Long. Thanks again for hanging out with us, and please keep coming back to hear more reasons why Gaston's great. <music>